Blessed love and blessed day, oh, boxing world, boxing nation, fighting world, fighting nation. It's Coach Fire and this is Real Life Boxing. Hey, you know what's mad funny to me? How come Jamel Charlo, up to this day, up to date, hasn't been mentioned as a top pound for pound fighter? Now, this is the day after he became undisputed. But I'm just, I'm just, I'm just wondering because now he has to be considered pound for pound. I'm just wondering how come up to this point he's never been like in the talks for pound for pound. Hey, before we get into it, I'ma ask y'all to give me y'all best double jab straight down the pipe. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you can be notified when all new content is being uploaded on the channel of Real Life Boxing. We doing these live streams, we working, we getting the channel um, back up and running. But let's talk about this Jamel Charlo situation. First and foremost, shout out to Jamel Ironman Charlo for becoming undisputed, the first ever at 154 pounds last night with his dominating destruction and KO of Brian Castaño, who put up a decent fight, who did as best as he could. But um, Jamel Charlo was just better last night, and that's what I figured. But now, we definitely got to stop putting some respect on, I ain't going to say both Charlo's names, but we definitely got to put respect on Jam on Jamel Charlo's name. The problem is, is that they twins, you know what I'm saying? So guilty by association for years, everybody just been on the Charlo's case on the Charlo's case. They started off as real hot prospects, the twins, um, everybody loving them. And then they both became world champions. And then shortly after that, Everybody started hating on him. Now it's been years. Um, Jamal Charlo, you know, we still haven't really seen him in a big fight. But Mel, Jamal's been chasing Carnelo. Jamal's been chasing Triple G. Both of these guys were in what seemed to be unfortunate situations earlier on. Well, Jamal still, like, chasing, um, chasing Carnelo, chasing Triple G. And he just can't seem to get those fights. He was in 154 pounder before. He should have stayed at 54, went up to 60, and really, you know, hasn't been nothing going on for Maul. But he is the WP, the WBC um, champion, and still looking for the big fights. Mel, on the other hand, Mel has been on a tear. Mel has been on a great run, and I feel like it has to get more credit. It has to get more. It has to be valued more, and I think that we tend to devalue it because they come in twos as a pair of twins and one of them is still not you know giving us exactly what we think we should get from him so we tend to just put them as one and just kind of pick on the both of them but as of today as of what may 14th may 15th 2022 jamel charlo undisputed at 154 we gotta stop putting some respect on that boy's name now when they when they showed his record last night um, leading up to the fight and I was like damn all his title defenses have been by stoppage now before Brian Castaño all his title defensive defenses he's won by um world boxing okay let me see world boxing welterweight um council super welterweight all right we're gonna look at it we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look at it right now excuse me playlist just flipped over but well, we're gonna look at it um right now let me see World Boxing Super Charles Charles Hatley was a WB, WBC World Superweight title. He KO'd um, vacant. Okay, John Jackson, the Cosmopolitan Las Vegas Chelsea, vacant World Boxing Council Superweight title. So he beat John Jackson and became, I think that was for the vacant. So he beat him by KO, became champion. Then he beat Charles Hatley by KO. Then he beat Erickson Lubin by KO. These are all title defenses. Then he beat Erickson Lubin by KO. Then in a majority decision in 2018, he beat Austin Trout. Then he lost a, U, a UD against Tony Harrison in 2018, which I thought that he beat Tony Harrison. So he lost to Tony Harrison. Then he came back against Jorge Coda. That wasn't a title defense because um, Tony Harrison took it knocked out Jorge Coda, then went back in against Tony Harrison, knocked out Tony Harrison and got his belt back, then went against Jason Rosario, stopped Jason Rosario um, with a jab to the body, 
Then he fought to a draw against Brian Castano in the first fight and stopped Brian Castano last night. So, in and we can even go before he became champion against um, Joe Chim Alsan. He won a he won a TK one two three four five six seven eight KOs out of. Eight KOs out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Out of eleven fights, there was eight eight KOs. One was a draw, and one was a um, one was a majority decision, and one was a unanimous decision loss to Tony Harrison. So eight out of eleven fights, and not eight out of nine victories were all by KO and TKO, and this was all leading back all the way back to 2017 2016 so all the way back to may 2016 um this man has just been annihilating the competition stopping the competition and i feel like we just got to put some respect on his name now last night at the at the presser he told um keith i was it keith keith Idick or it was the other one not keith Idick was the other one uh i don't want to be getting their names confused but it was the espn dude um Ah, uh, shit. Uh, Mike Coppinger. Yeah, Mike Coppinger. And Mike Coppinger asked him, um, Mike, Mike Coppinger said, oh, I got a question. And Charlo said, oh, you're going to give me my respect now? You're going to give me my respect now on your pound for pound list? And Derek James trying to calm him down and said, no, 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 stop. We love him. And Charlo said, no, 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 you love him. I don't love him. So he's getting, he's getting greasy on the press as well. But I feel like we definitely got to stop putting some respect on Jamel Charlo's name. And he cannot just be guilty by association because of his brother, um, Jamal Charlo. You know what I'm saying? We got to put some respect on Mel's name, dog. 154, first ever 154 pound, unified, stopped. Last 11 fights, won, won nine of them. And one was, a, one was a draw and one was a loss to Tony Harrison, which I felt like he won. And eight stoppages. Like eight stoppages, bro. We gotta put some respect on the man's name. We gotta put some respect on the man's name. How come in honestly I don't even pay attention to pound for pound all like that because it's all opinion anyway. There is no like official who's number one pound for pound, you know, ring magazine and every different site comes out with their list. But my thing is how come we never hear about we hearing about Usyk, we hearing about um Terence Crawford, we hearing about Errol Spence, we hearing about Lomachenko, we hearing about um we hearing about this person, we hearing about that person, we hearing about Tank Davis. How come we not hearing about how come we not hearing about Jamel Ironman Charlo? Nine victories out of eleven with the, with eight stoppages, all title defenses. Come on, man. Come on, man. We gotta stop hating. We can't be doing the pound for pound list based off of the fighters that we like. You know what I'm saying? Compared to the fighters that we don't like. When it comes to boxing, we gotta put some respect on Jamel Charlo's name. Um, plain and simple. You guys tell me what y'all think about it in the comment section. I said what I said. We gotta put some respect on on on, on Mel's name. You know what I'm saying? No matter what we think about them boys, man, we got to put some respect on Mel's name. You know what I mean? You guys tell me what y'all think about it in the comments section. Until then, keep fighting your fight and protect yourself at all times. Man, it's Coach Fires for Life. Box and peace and one love.